Okay, blessings brothers and sisters. It's thank you all that were able to come out. Thank you. Thank you all that were able to come out today to Sabbath. We know a lot of you are either pre-scheduled uh, for the day or uh, are feeling under the weather. We pray in Yeshua's name that each and every one of you uh, is healed swiftly and soon. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and please rise as we read from Scripture. We're going to be reading from 1 Timothy chapter 3. Trustworthy is the saying, If any man aspires to the office of overseer or elder, he desires a good work. An overseer then must be beyond criticism, clear-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach, not addicted to any substance, not violent, but gentle, peaceable, free from love of money, managing his old, own household well, keeping his children under the control, under control with all respectfulness. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, may our people, may your people rather, fit within this building. May, may they not dwell on their past, but may they reach every moment forward, choosing to do what is good and right in your sight at all times. We pray this for each and every son and daughter of yours. We pray this for each and every servant of yours. In Yeshua's name and the people of God say, Amen. 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 Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Begin with the blowing of the shofar, a call to assemble and worship. Please stand if possible as those trained with the shofar come forward. Then the son of then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar, and they will gather together his chosen people from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24, 30-31. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kidishani v'mitzvotah v'tivanu, v'tivanu lishmoah kol shofar. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to hear the call of the Jophar. Amen. Along with the many traditional blessings we have, we have a renewed covenant blessing, thanking God for giving us the way to salvation in our Messiah Yeshua. Yeshua walked among us, filled with your spirit, the only one who ever fulfilled your Torah. He healed the sick and raised the dead. The multitudes of our people sought his touch. He taught as no man taught, with authority. He brought forth the treasures of the Torah, how the children sought him, the lepers he touched and made clean, how the despised and outcast found love and release from their sin, how the hypocrites feared him whose words uncovered their sin, despised and rejected, acquainted with grief. He bore the sins of Israel. All we like sheep have gone astray, turned everyone to his own way, our iniquities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world his burden to bear. He rose from the dead and opened the way to life everlasting. Praise his name. We are in him. His spirit empowers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, 
who has given us Messiah Yeshua our King. Blessing of the Messiah. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natalanu et derech ha Yeshua b'moshiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, come, let us sing for joy to Adonai. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. For Adonai is a great God and a great king above all gods. Blessed be his name. Um, please join me for Micha Mocha. <laughs> Micha Mocha. Oh. 
¿Quién es como tú, Señor, entre los dioses? ¿Quién es como tú, en gloria y majestad? Eres grande en poder, haces maravillas. ¿Quién es como tú, Señor? Mi ¿Quién es como tú, mi hija moja? Um, we're going to be continuing with Leja Dodi. Um, and this specific piece of liturgy is um, a song that resembles the... Um, the, the the joining of the bride and the bridegroom. <clears throat> The Lord is one and his name is one, for his renown and his splendor and his praise. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we receive. Come, my beloved, shake off the dust, arise, dressed in garments of glory, my people. Through the son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, redemption draws near to my soul. Come, my beloved, wake up, wake up, for your light has come. Awaken, awaken, sing a song, for the glory of the Lord is revealed to you. Come, my beloved. Um, if you are not already and you're able, please um, rise and join me for the Amidah, the standing prayer, um, which is the oldest of our traditional prayers, going back to early Second, Second Temple, Temple times. Save. He sustains the living with kindness, revives the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds, and who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? And you are faithful to bring back life to the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who revives the dead. You are holy, and your name is holy, and holy ones praise you every day forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the holy God. <coughs> and um, we'll be continuing with Hodu. Please join me. Oh, do la donai kito, kile o lam fasto. Oh, do la donai kito, kile o lam fasto. Oh, do, oh, do, oh, do, oh, do, oh, do la donai. Oh. 
His mercy forever endures. Give thanks to the Lord, He is good. His mercy forever endures. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, He is good. Thanks, give thanks to the Lord, He is good. <laughs> Please um, join me for Ian Kelohim. <laughs> Ain Kelohenu, Ain Kadonenu, Ain Kemakenu, Ain Kemoshienu. Mi Eloheinu, mi Chadoneinu, mi Chemalkeinu, east in the direction of Jerusalem as we cover our eyes in humility before Hashem and recite the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echai ואהבת את אדוני אלוקיך, והוא לבך ורחו נשיך ורחו מידיך, והיו את הדברים האלה, אשר היא מצבך היום על רבך, ושילמתם לבניך ודיברת בם ושבתך בביתך ובלתך, ותלג ושק בהו קמך, ושתם להיות על ידיך, והיו לטטפות בעיניך, ותפתם במסוס ביתך ובישעריך. He always said the Lord is our God, the Lord is mine. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words that I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall speak of them when you sit at home, when you walk along the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be for frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophets depend on these two commandments. <coughs> Um, please remain standing and join me for the Aleinu, which means it is our duty. Aleinu, l'shabiach l'adon chaku, l'atet g'dula l'yotzei b'reshi, sh'lo s'anu, Yeah. 
our duty to praise the Master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation, for he made us unlike the nations of the lands, and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He has not made our portion like theirs, and our lot like all their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow, and acknowledge our thanks before the King of the kings, the Holy One. Blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation, and the seat of his glory is in the heavens above, and the presence of his powers in the most exalted heights. He is our God, there is none other. True is our King, there is nothing beside him. As it is written in his Torah, and you shall know this day, and take to heart the Lord, he is God. In the heavens above and on the earth below, there is none other. And it is said, the Lord shall be king over all the world. On that day, the Lord will be one, and his name one. And um, now please join me for Adon Alam, which is king of the universe. <coughs> Adon Olam Hashem Beterem Ko Yitzir Nibra Let Nasa Rechef Sokol Asai Melech Shemo Nekra Veyachare Kiglol Takul Levato Im who reigned before any form was created, when creation came about by his will, and his king was his name proclaimed to be. And after all has ceased to be, he alone will reign in awesomeness, and he was, and he is, and shall be eternally in splendor. And he is first, and there is no second to compare to him, to be his equal, without beginning and without end. His is the power and dominion. And he is my God, my living redeemer, and the rock of my pain in times of trouble. And he is my banner and a refuge for me, the portion of my cup in the day I call upon him. In his hands I entrust my spirit, in the time I sleep or am awake, and with my spirit, my body, the Lord is with me. I shall not fear. <laughs> Moshe rejoiced in the gift of his portion that you called him a faithful servant, a crown of splendor you placed on his head when he stood before you on Mount Sinai. He brought down two stone tablets in his hand on which is inscribed the observance of Shabbat. So it is written in your Torah. Uh, please join me for Veshamru. <clears throat> Veshamru ben Israel et hashabat Eivasoi et hashabat Le'dotam be'i olam Veshamru ben Israel et hashabat Hey, 
Shabbat Le'etorotam Be'olam Vayom Chashvi Shabbat Vayinafash Shabbat Vayinafash Shabbat Vayinafash Shamru Bene Israel Et Shabbat Lasoit Et Shabbat the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for on six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. From Shemot Exodus 31, 16. You did not give it, O Lord our God, to the nations of the lands, nor did you make it the inheritance our king of the worshippers of graven idols. For to Israel your people have you given it in love, to the seed of Yaakov whom you have chosen, the people that sanctified the seventh. They will all be satisfied and delighted from your goodness. In the seventh you found favor in it and sanctified it. Most coveted of days, you called it a remembrance of the act of creation. <laughs> our God and the God of our fathers, may you be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us with your commandments and grant our share in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and gladden us with your salvation and purify our hearts to serve you sincerely. O Lord our God, with love and favor, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage and may Israel, the sanctifiers of your name, rest on it. Blessed are you, O Lord, who sanctifies the Shabbat. Um, as we continue into the Torah service, we will not be bringing the Torah out due to uh, weather conditions. Um, but we do ask that you can, um, continue to show respect to the Word of God um, while we do read the Torah portion by um, standing for the reading of Torah and participating in this service. <coughs> There is none like you, O Lord, among the gods that are worshipped, and there are no deeds like yours. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Source of mercy, let your goodness be a blessing to Zion. Let Jerusalem be rebuilt. In you alone do we trust, O sovereign God, high and exalted, Lord of all the worlds. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forth, Moshe would say, Rise up, Lord, and scatter your enemies, and may those who hate you run from you. Torah will go forth out of Zion, the Lord's word from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who in his holiness gave Torah to his people Israel. Vayahi bin Saharoi, Vayomer Moshe, Kuma Adonai, Veafutsoi Vecha, Veanusu Mesanecha, Vipanecha, Ki Mitsioi. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us His Torah. This week's Pasha is Becha from Vaikra 25 1 through 26 2. And uh, we're going to be reading um, 2547 through 262 in English and 251 through 2 in um, Hebrew. By the Bernai El Moshe Bechar, Sinai Lemon. 
לבעל בני ישראל, ואמרת אלוהים, כי תבוא אל הארץ, אשר אני נתן לכם, ושבת הארץ שבת. Um, in English, that is one moment. Hashem spoke to, to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land that I give you, the land shall observe a Sabbath rest, a Sabbath rest for Hashem. <coughs> and, um, in the English, we'll be doing 2547 through 262. means of a sojourner who resides with you shall become sufficient and your brother becomes impoverished with him and he is sold to an alien who resides with you or to an idol of a sojourn sojourner's family after he has been sold he shall have a redemption one of his brothers shall redeem him or his uncle or his cousin shall redeem him or a relative from his family shall redeem him or if his own means become sufficient he shall be redeemed he shall make a reckoning with his purchaser from the year he was sold to him until the jubilee year the money of his purchase shall be divided by the number of years. He shall be regarded with him like the years of a laborer. If there are yet many years, he shall repay his redemption accordingly from the money of his purchase. And if there are a few years left until the jubilee year, he shall reckon that with him. According to his years, shall he repay his redemption. He shall be with him like a laborer hired by the year. He shall not subjugate him through, a, through hard labor in your sight. If he has not been redeemed by these means, then he shall go out in the jubilee year, he and his children with him. For the children of Israel are servants to me. They are my servants whom I have taken out of the land of Egypt. I am Hashem your God. <clears throat> you shall not make idols for yourselves, and you shall not erect for yourselves a statue or, pil a, or, or a pillar. And in your land you shall not emplace a flooring stone upon which to prostrate oneself. For I am Hashem your God. My Sabbath shall you observe, and my sanctuary shall you revere. I am Hashem. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת, לחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו. If you are not already and you are able, please stand and join me for the visit. Um, although we don't have the uh, Torah scroll present with us, we will still do the visit. Vezot HaTorah Asher Samoshe Rifne Bnei Yisrael Al Pi Adonai Be'yad Moshe and this is the Torah that Moshe placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moshe's hand. The half Torah blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Bin Viim Tovim, Veratza vedivrehem, hane emarim beemet. Baruk ata Adonai, habocher batora, uv Moshe avdo, uv Israel amo, uvin vie hayamet, batzedek. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who selected good prophets and was pleased with their words, which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chooses the Torah, your servant Moshe your people Israel, and prophets of truth and righteousness. Today's reading is from Jeremiah 32, 6-27. So Jeremiah said, The word of Adonai came to me, saying, Hanamel, son of Shalom, your uncle, will soon come to you, saying, Buy for yourself my field in Anat 
Hoth, for the right of redemption is yours to buy it. So my uncle's son, Hanamel, came to me in the court of the guard, as was the word of Adonai, and said to me, Buy my field, please, which is in Anatoth, in the land of Benjamin. For the right of inheritance is yours, and the redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of Adonai. So I bought the field that was in Anatoth from the son of my uncle Hanamel, and weighed him the money. Seventeen shekels of silver. I signed and sealed the deed, called in witnesses, and weighed the money on the scales. Then I took the purchase deed, both the sealed copy containing the terms and conditions and the open copy, and I gave the purchase deed to Baruch, son of Neriah, son of Mashiach, in the presence of my uncle's son, Hanamel, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the purchase deed before all the Jews that sat in the court of the guard. Then I charged Baruch before them, saying, Thus says Adonai Zavot, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, this purchase deed, both the sealed copy and the open copy, and put them in a clay jar, so they may last many days. For thus says Adonai Zavot, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards will yet again be bought in this land. After I had given the purchase deed to Baruch, son of Neriah, I prayed to Adonai, saying, Ah, my lord Adonai, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. You are the one doing mercy to thousands, but repaying the iniquity of the fathers into the lap of their children after them. Great, mighty God, Adonai Zavot is his name, great in counsel and mighty in deed, whose eyes are open to all the ways of the children of men, to give each one according to his ways and according to the fruit of his deeds. You set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, and even to this day in Israel and among mankind, and made yourself a name as to this day. You brought your people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and wonders, with a strong hand and an outstretched arm, and with great terror. You gave them this land, which you swore to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. They came in and possessed it, but they did not obey your voice nor walk in your Torah. They have done nothing of all you commanded them to do. Therefore, you caused all this evil to fall on them. Look, the siege ramps have just come up to the city to take it. The city has been handed over to the Chaldeans fighting against it because of the sword the famine, and the pestilence. What you have spoken has happened. Here it is. You see it. Yet you said to me, my Lord Adonai, buy for yourself the field for money and call in witnesses, even as the city is handed over to the Chaldeans. Then came the word of Adonai to Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am Adonai, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Zorkul haolamim, Zadik b'kol haderot, Ha'el ha'neiman, Ha'omer v'oseh, Ha'ndeberum kayem, Shekul devarav, Emet v'atzedek. Ne'eman atahu Adonai Eloheinu, V'ne'emanim devareka, V'devar echad midvareka, Akur lo yashuv rekam. Ki el melek neiman berakaman ata baruch ata adonai ha el ha neiman bekol devarav. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, Rock of all eternities, faithful in all generations, the trustworthy God who says and does, who speaks and makes it come to pass, all of whose words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words. For not one word of yours is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the God who is faithful in all his words. Amen. Amen. 
Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher, lan, asher natan lanu Mashiach Yeshua, v'hadibrot shel brit chachadasha, Baruch atah Adonai, no tain ha brit chachadasha, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the renewed covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. Amen. Today's reading is Luke 4, 14 through 22. Yeshua returned in the power of the Ruach to Galilee, and the news about him went out throughout the surrounding region. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone was praising him. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been raised, as was his custom. He went into the synagogue on Shabbat, and he got up to read. When the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Ruach Adonai is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim, release the captives, and recover the sight of the blind, and to set free the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of Adonai's favor. He closed the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue were focused on him. Then he began to tell them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. All were speaking well of him and marveling at the gracious words coming out of his mouth. And they were saying, Isn't this the son of Joseph? Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu hadavar hayemet, vehaye olam nata betocheinu. Baruch atah Adonai, no ten habrit hacharsha. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of truth and has planted everlasting in our midst, everlasting life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. Amen. <laughs> tree of life to those who take hold of her and all who support her are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness and all its paths are peace. Return us, O Lord, to you and we shall return and renew our days as in the days of old. May he who has blessed our forefathers, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, bless those who have come to honor God and the Torah. May the Holy One send blessings upon them and upon their families and upon all the works of their hands. Amen. May our eyes behold your return to Zion in compassion. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who restores his presence to Zion. Amen. Grant peace, goodness, and blessing, grace, kindness, and mercy to us and to all your people, Israel. Bless us, our Father, all of us together, through the light of your presence. Truly, through the light of your presence, Adonai, our God, you gave us a Torah of life, love of kindness, justice, and blessing, mercy, life, and peace. May you see fit to bless your people Israel at all times, at every hour, with your peace. Shabbat Shuvah, inscribe us for life, blessing peace and prosperity, remembering all your people Israel for life and peace. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of peace. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before you, Adonai, my rock and my redeemer. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom.
Okay, blessings, brothers and sisters. Let's go ahead and get into the Word today. This week's Torah portion is Bachar. But before we do, we're going to invite Brother Tony to come forward and pray for the tithes and offerings. Come forward, Brother Moshe. Pray for the tithes and offerings. All right. We'll be speaking from Moshe, and Moshe is speaking. Here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Father God, out of love to be here with you, Father God, to listen to your word and to obey your commandments, Father God. Not out of force, but out of love, Father God, everything that we do for you. We ask and pray that you accept these tithe and offerings that we give out of our own free will, Father God, to bless you, to bless the work that needs to be done in your kingdom, Father God, and we ask that you accept it, Father God, and that you multiply it back to us, Father God, that we may keep keep blessing you, Father God, in this never-ending circle of blessing between us and you, Father God. And we thank you for all that you have done, Father God, for being the first to give. In Yeshua's name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Unfortunately, those of you who will watch online, you will not see this until later today, okay? I'm not sure that it's, it's actually live right now, right? We're, we're recording that. Okay, so then... It says we're live, but it's not getting a... Uh, no worries. Sending. Look, we'll go right into the Word. Those of you watching, we do apologize for any technical uh, delays. But that being said, we'll go ahead and get right into the Word. Uh, thank you, Brother Moshi, for... Praying over the tithes and offerings. Uh, just a moment, please. Okay. <clears throat> this week's Torah portion is titled Bachar. Now, this is this isn't this week's Torah portion or any other Torah portion is not a coincidental thing. It is the same portion that every single synagogue around the globe, in and out of Israel, is all studying and reading from right now. Because there is... How many kingdoms of God is, are there? One. How many messiahs are there? How many holy spirits? And how many Elohims is there? One, right? Even though that word is a pluralized word, it is still one. One union, right? So let's go right into it. Bahar means on the mount. Literally, when they, when they read the Parsha, as our daughter went through the Hebrew, God bless her, uh, it literally says, and God spoke to Moshe, on mount... Sinai, right? But the mount is where we get the word Bachar from, on the mount, okay? So let's go into that a little bit. The Torah commands us this week, if your brother is impoverished and his means falter in your proximity, you shall strengthen him. Now brother in this context means whether they're a proselyte or if they just happen to be a a citizen of the kingdom. They are still considered, in Torah language, your brother or your sister, right? Because they are members of the same nation. So, let's go further on. And the Torah continues, so that he can live with you. What, what is the big deal of us living together? What is the big deal with that? Why does Israel have to encamp all together like that? Why? Because the Lord is one. <laughs> right? Unity. Unity, right? <clears throat> and we dwell in unity with one another, right? Yes. We Except take care of each other. We take care of each other. We even, if sometimes if need be, correct each other, right? Even, you know, and I get it, somebody's going to watch and say, well, he's, he's a rabbi, so he probably never gets corrected. Um, actually, that's not true, right? <laughs> Rabbis get corrected all the time. 
because we have to keep ourselves sharp. And if we are above reproach, then we aren't doing the right job, right? So we always have to seek to improve, to, to grow, to be enlightened, to inspire and encourage all along the way. But let me go further on. Do not take from him interest or increase, and you shall fear your God. And let your brother live with you. Do not give him your money for interest, and do not give him your food for increase. I'll ask this in, in the beginning, but what is the big deal if you charge your brother interest? Or increase? What's the big deal? <laughs> Say if Brother Tony lent Phil five shekels. And he says, I tell you what, I'm going to let you have a year to pay this back, but you got to give me seven. Oh, really? Huh? <laughs> Profiteering from it. Profiteering? <clears throat> it, it's something different, but yes, that's, well, that's close, right? That's not how you would treat yourself. So. Right, yeah. That's a very good way to put it. But I'll give you all the gist of it after I go through this, okay? All right. So live with your brother means keep working and building each other. A person cannot fully, freely live with you or work with you as co-laborers if they always feel they owe you something, right? How, how are they ever going to try and improve? Because they're always under your thumb on top of the other thumbs they place upon themselves, right? So, to live with means to keep working and building each other up. He is who Hashem has brought into your life, not coincidentally, right? It's not by chance that God brought this person to your life who will become a, a brother of faith who you're now being a blessing to. Right? There's a purpose in it that God has brought you two together. So that y'all would be co-laborers of the field. In the Sofer, it explains it this way. It says, when we left Egypt, what do we have? Really? What, what were we entitled to when we left Egypt? What were we entitled to? What were we entitled to, Phil, when we left Egypt? Nothing, really. Mm -hmm. let, only the land that God had promised us. We weren't entitled to anything, right? He yeah. freed us. That should be enough at, yeah. right there, right? And we say it every year at the Dainu, right? If he had only set us free, Dainu, right? That would be enough. But he didn't just set us free, right? right? And so in the Kisav, so fair, it explains when we left Egypt, we should have, in all honesty, we should have only left with what was on our bodies. In other words, the only thing we should have really left with was our shirt, our clothes, maybe a tallit. That's it, right? Just what, what we had on. This is all we really deserve, right? And yet, God in His infinite wisdom, when we left, we left with gold, we left with silver, and these, these, mind you, were gold and silver from the Egyptians. And then, after splitting the sea in the Yam Suf, it says that as the, as the waters came back together, that the that the 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 wealth of each of those charioteers washed up upon the shores of the river, and Israel was allowed to grab all of that also. God gave all of it to us, but He stipulated one minor request out of all of it, out of all the wealth that He is offering to you. Out of all the healing, of all insight, of all the elevation he's offering to you, he asks one small stipulation. When we take the wealth he gave us 
and pass it around, we are asked not to derive any benefit from it. Right? So we cannot sit there and make a profit off of what we had freely received. Right? Freely received is freely given. given, right? So as we receive, we immediately give, right? That's how that goes. Let me go further on. We are told to lend it to our brothers without profit. For we owe the Almighty all that we have. The very least that we can do is pay it forward without interest. When we give, when we do, it should be done unto When we give, we should do it unto? No? I'm sorry, what? What did y'all say? Unto God, for His glory, yeah. Unto the glory of God, right? When we give, it should be done unto His glory. It should be done as a blessing. Let me ask y'all something. Why are we observant? Say, we versus... Uh, anything else? Why are we observing? Why? What's the point? Is it for salvation? No. It's not for salvation. Why are we observing? Because we, love we already have the prize. What else do we need? Doing it out of love. Huh? We're just doing it out of love. Doing it out of love, right? Out of what? Relationship. Out of relationship, right? Because God said, this is how I want to be treated. And this is how I will treat you, Right? Very simple. It's a ketubah. It's a marital contract between us and him. Let's go on. So it's not for the sake of receiving salvation. There's two Hebrew words that I'm going to give you today. Y'all say neshech. Say it again. Neshech. This means to bite. Or it's in relation mainly to interest, right? Because as you are placing interest or more stipulations over your brother or sister, you are taking from them, right? You're, you're biting out from them the zeal, the joy, the, the inspiration to do good and to do what is right. The other word is, and it's mainly saying it in a way that you're biting into the life of the borrower. So with that, the word marbis, y'all say marbis? Marbis. It means increase. Because it grows and grows and grows as time passes and it doesn't cease growing. Sounds like a lot of the interest rates or payments that go with things. So what is un so unforgivable about the sin of lending with interest that warrants us potentially being cut off from Israel? What, what is so serious? Let me go further on. There was a story about a, about a wealthy Jew. And... He had built his fortune largely by lending money to other Jews and charging interest. Interest after interest he would charge. Finally, on his deathbed, the community the community gathered together and protested that he should not be buried in the Jewish cemetery. Because every time anyone went to him out of necessity or desperation, he would lend them, sure enough, with interest, 20%, 30%, 60%, and on it went. So when they went to ask Rabbi Akiva during that time period what he thinks they should do, he says, well, 
A cemetery is just a place of, of, of temporary. It's not, you're technically only renting it or leasing it. You're not actually there forever, right? He says, so, being that this brother's probably going to be in that spot forever, charge him double. Because he's paying for his eternal home out of all the interest that he charged. And so this is what happened. The problem with charging interest or, or requiring more from brothers and sisters when they have given, when they have blessed, the problem with this is, is that you are not giving the borrower a chance to get on their feet. Imagine, right? Say, Sister Lisa's in a jam. She needs to borrow a few hundred dollars, right? Somebody blesses her with that. And she thinks, okay, now I have some breathing room. I can start, start now kind of working to progress, working to to get myself up working, right? To get further in my status. But if you charge her interest and charge her all kinds of absurdities, she's now not only worried about what she was before, but now she's worried about you. And how she's going to pay you back, or better yet, how she's going to avoid you because she can't pay you. And you only complain about it every time you see her, right? Mm. So, no. Bless for the sake of the kingdom. Bless because he has blessed you. So they say that when a person is, is down in the dumps and they're not able to, a person cannot get themselves out of a ditch, right? They can't. Generally, they need help getting it out of there. Um, in the 1920s, a rabbi was was locked up in a in a uh, Nazi holding place, and they had cuffed him. And, and they said, "Look, we can we'll let you go if you can remove the cuffs yourself." This is an impossibility, right? He was able to get out, but not by himself. Another rabbi who was locked up with him undid the cuffs. It always takes somebody else to help you out of the situation. And this kind of points to that in the kingdom we need each other. As much as we need God, we need each other. Right? To encourage each other, to build each other up, and yes, sometimes to give a word of rebuke. Like, daughter, good to see you again. <laughs> So, in these moments, when you are feeling the world's against you, lean upon your brother or your sister. In both of you together, call upon the Father. For we know that where two or more are gathered, yes, right? Let me go further on. So when you feel at your last draw, seek to do goodness in those moments. When you're feeling beat up, down, discouraged, get up and do goodness. Or if you can't handle the weight of your frustration alone, call a brother or sister. Scripture says, bear one another's burdens, right? So... These are the two prescribed methods given by Scripture. Only by filling your life with good will you remove the bad. In the Talmud, it famously states, a prisoner cannot free themselves. It's a really simple idea if you think about it. Prisoners cannot free themselves, right? And yet, who has came to declare all the captives free? Yeshua. 
And if you have Yeshua and I have Yeshua, then we should be free indeed, right? And we should be presenting the same liberty to other brothers and sisters. So, very much like the statement in the Talmud, a prisoner cannot free themselves. We need someone else to do it. Therefore, when we share eternal truths, when we share eternal, the eternal Word of God, when we share the living Word of God, we are helping to bring about freedom to those who are still lost in captivity. When we share His love and His kindness, His blessings, as we do, we set our lives in the flow of His kingdom. In Psalm 121, verse 1, I lift up my eyes to where, to the mountains, where my... Oh, some people read, read scriptures. Good on y'all. <laughs> Phil, you're going to have to read a lot more. I didn't hear you at all, sir. <laughs> all right. The maker of heaven and earth. Right? Therefore, in 1 Thessalonians, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are currently doing. Let me, let me change up gears and go further on. In Leviticus 26 of this week's Torah portion, do not make idols or set up an image or sacred stones for yourself. Do not place carving, carved stones in your land or bow down before them. For I am the Lord your God. Observe my Sabbath and reverence my gathering place. Do not make idols or make stone carvings. So there, there are many fascinating developments in the world, right? Right now, I mean, we have Ishka showed me a, a video of a kid making a, a whole full-on uh, robot, right? He had a, like a human face the whole bit. So, and then on the other end, you have Russia that's going completely out there and attacking any and everybody. You have the Democrats, you have the Republicans, you have all kinds of odd stuff that's happening these days, right? And yet, despite all this, do not make stone monuments or idols. What is an idol? Anything that you put before God. Anything that you place more importance on than your Creator, right? That can become an idol. What is it to make something into a stone, car stone carving? What would that be? Because I know I see a lot of uh, rock workers here, right? I know Ishka, she's always pounding rocks in, in the yard, like, <laughs> weekly. <laughs> Namely, that'd be me and, uh, <laughs> in some of my difficult moments. Uh, but no, all joking aside, what would be making a stone monument? What is that? What is that? Idolatry. What is making a stone monument? Huh? Idolatry. Okay, we already covered idolatry, right? But God specifies two different things here, right? Uh, worship uh, <clears throat> anything that's not God. Oh, okay. Graven images. Graven images. Yes, these are all. But it's also holding on to things, isn't it? Uh, right? Isn't it? If if I say say if Phil offends Tony, right? <laughs> And Tony holds on to that offense, that becomes a stumbling stone in his life. Right? That comes a stumbling block. Right? That becomes a literal stone that he's carrying around, and every time he sees Brother Phil, he's like, oh. yeah. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> well, not out loud. 
<laughs> and of course, I mean, but naturally, those of you who are going to watch this video, we don't. There is no actual issue between brother Tony and brother Phil. They get along great. Okay. Uh, but so when we hold on to issues, offenses, insults, hurts. You know, like uh, if I didn't get the right promotion that I wanted from whatever rabbi was over me at the time, if I hold on to that, that becomes a pillar in my life. And instead of the pillars being Hesed, Gavora, Da'at, and the other good pillars, I now have a pillar of offense. Right? And every time I think about that person, I get upset or my blood pressure goes up or whatever it is, Right? Over and over again, this plays out in our lives because we haven't just let it go, right? Okay? So, in the eyes or in the terms of the kingdom, we need to speak out for what is true and right in the eyes and in the sight of God in the kingdom. And in the sight of the Torah, we need to do what is right and good in the sight of Torah. Right? right? Do not hold on to issues. Do this one time, okay? Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. It's up to you. Uh, if you have an issue with somebody and you've had it for a little while, Tell that person, hey, I'm sorry I was upset at you for eating the ice cream. Over half of the time, they're not even going to remember eating the ice cream. Right? They're not, yeah. they're somewhere else entirely. They, they don't remember, they don't even remember what flavor the ice cream was. But you remember, don't you? You remember how many chocolate chips were in that ice cream. You remember how, how many much... scoops? No, I'm just there you go. You already... Look, she already knew how many scoops she was going to get out of that ice cream. Last of the hot fudge. <laughs> See? So, the irony here is that most of the time, it's only you that's holding on to it. The other people have done moved on. So it's you that is causing your own issue, primarily. Because you have created this, this wonderful stone pillar inside of you. That all of your offenses go to, all of your hurts, all of your uncertainty, they just go right there and you bow down and worship it weekly. Oh, you don't. I have proof. Let that person who's a, who hurt you walk past you. And watch how you start worshiping that stone pillar inside you. Watch. <sighs> Who does she think she is? Just walk by me like nothing ever happened? How could she? Let go of the offenses. The rabbis give a wonderful step in how to get through this a little bit easier. They say step one and only step one is to step outside of the controversy. Right? If you and a brother are having a disagreement, step outside of it. And now look at it for what it is. Right? And build an understanding of the issue from scratch. That means no longer go from what you thought, no longer go from what he thought, but go from completely outside of the subject and look at it objectively. And then as you're looking at it objectively from scratch, ask yourself, what does the Torah say of this? Or better yet, what does Yeshua say of this? Right? What does Yeshua say of this? So in the Torah portion, Bahar on the mount, the subject of Shemitah, and Shemitah, what does Shemitah itself mean? 
What does Shemitah itself mean? Just the word. What does it mean? Hmm? You try to guess? It, yes, it's related to the sabbatical, yes. Yes, you're right. But it itself only means two words. Shemitah. What does it mean? Brilliant daughter. What does it mean, brilliant daughter? The word Shemitah itself, brilliant daughter. See how I put brilliant daughter every time? Brilliant daughter? Huh? Oh, that's cute. No, that's not what Shemitah itself means. It is that time frame, yes. Yes. Shemitah itself, by itself, means release of the fields. Right? Release the fields. It's literally what it means. So if God is calling us, and being that we're not in B'nai Israel, we are out here in the diaspora, right? Our obligation to releasing the fields is releasing of all the nonsense, right? This is our obligation. Releasing of all the nonsense. Uh, release of the fields in the seven year, in the seventh year. Uh, two concepts. One of the concepts of, of the Shemitah is to release or let go of all that keeps you. Namely, the main thing that keeps most people are their own, the things that they have done. For example, letting go of all the hurts or wrongs of others. You are called to release it. In case you didn't pay attention during Yom Kippur, you now have a whole year to get all that cleared off of your life. And only a year. Let go of all, all hurts or wrongs of others. What happens when we when we let some of the stuff out of our vessel? What does that create in us? Space. Space. For it, love. For his love. Yeah, and then he can fill that with love, with blessing, with enlightenment, understanding. You can't sit there and, and sing the Kim Walker song, Fill Me Up, Lord, if you're full. Right? Fill me up, Lord. I'm sorry, you got too much anxiety in there. Let's get rid of some of that first, okay? Fill me up, Lord. I'm, I can't. You're full. Your capacity is only so much. You're not infinite. You're finite, right? So you have to let go to receive. You have to give to receive. It's funny how both of those work, right? You want more love? Give more love. But let go of hurt. The other concept is, y'all say this with me, Tehiyas Hamesim. Tehiyas Hamesim. You say it? Hamesim. Very good. Oh, y'all sound like Israelis. Uh, and she was she was giggling for y'all's uh, <laughs> arrival at that designation. <laughs> so Tachias Hamesim is the time when God is restoring our new bodies. Right? This comes after we have rested in Gani Den and then we go to Jerusalem or the new Jerusalem. And there we are in the in the new world, if you will, or the world to come. How do you say that again, sweetheart, in, in Hebrew? World to come is what? Olam Habe Haba, what is it? Which one is it again? Do you remember, sir? Who remembers in class? <laughs> 
Okay, so in the world to come is when God will take all the molecules of our current person and form them into our new and eternal body. And this is taught primarily throughout Judaism. So when does this take place? It takes place in the world to come. After the 6,000 year mark, what year are we currently in? What? Who's paying attention to the calendar? 59. Huh? 5782? Okay, so we're not far, right? We're not far. And if we add in 200 from the time we're in Babylon, that puts us right there. Doesn't it? We're right there, we're really close. So, what do we do? Do we just prepare for the world to come? Is that our only plight? To prepare for the world to come? No? We prepare now, right? We prepare now for the King Messiah. We prepare now for that world to come. We prepare now and do all the things we're supposed to be doing. Amen? For... And why do I bring up the world to come and the new body and this, all, all these concepts? It's very simple. This Torah portion brings it out. Let me continue. That the one who lends money with interest will not get upon his feet at the time of Tekiah's Hamasim. In other words, God is not going to restore the body of someone who could not be his brother's keeper. Or at least according to Talmud, he's not going to. Does this fit in line with actual scripture? Let's see, whatever you sow in on earth will be sown in. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound. Don't you think whatever you put down in salt or, or diminish on earth won't that also be diminished from our lives in heaven yeah so we may not seek to profit from the misfortune of others but rather we are commanded to do hesed with only the purest intentions Because the whole issue with it is, specifically from the kingdom, is when we deny our brother the opportunity to get on their feet, when we deny them the, the opportunity of love, of, of caring, who are we really denying? Ourselves. And ourselves, yeah. Y'all are right on it. We are denying Yeshua and we are denying ourselves, right? We are setting that bar for ourselves like, no, this is all I want, Lord, this right here. But we know that that isn't true, right? May we, hold, may we not hold on to the wrong of others. May we not, re and this is just as important, may we not repeat that same wrong through our lives to others that we care about. Because that's what happens. Right? Somebody will be abused, and they'll make this whole vow, I will never abuse anyone. Fast forward five years, and they're treating others around them just in that same way. Maybe the practice isn't carried out exactly, but the method is there. The pattern is there. The attitude, the, the all that's still there. So we may not hold on to the wrong because we don't want it repeating in what we do, right? And I know somebody's going to watch this and say, 
you know, they're, they're going to try and justify whatever. But there is no excuse for bad behavior. And there is no excuse for unkosher behavior. Let me go further on. May we not repeat the wrong in our own lives to the ones that we love or even to the strangers because God loves them. In the New Testament portion in Luke, I'm thinking it's chapter 5, starting at verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his, not tradition, custom. as was his custom. custom. What is a custom? It's your way of doing things, right? Whose custom was he following? His or only one, right? So he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Hey, just like all of us right now, huh? How about that? And he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me and proclaimed the to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover sight and recovery of the sight to the blind and to set liberty to those who are oppressed and to proclaim this is a year of the Lord's favor. Praise be to God. Yeshua proclaimed liber liberation. Yeshua proclaimed liberation has arrived for you and I right now. The living word of God has risen. And in these times, we can still take confidence in knowing that he is still on the throne. He is the same God from yesterday, yesteryear, yester century, tomorrow, and even this day. We know that His hand is still over all of His creation. So let us serve Him simply because He is King. Let us do that as upright brothers and sisters. I tell you now, your mistakes of yesterday do not determine your tomorrow. Live kosher. Live biblically kosher. Be good to each other. Be good to the stranger. Just as we were all once strangers to God. Lost in our own versions of Mitzrayim, of Egypt. co-laborers in his field. The Almighty commanded Moshe, who translated this directive to Joshua, that upon entering Eretz Israel, that Joshua was to collect how many large stones? Who can guess? How many large stones was Joshua to collect? Think bigger. Bigger, bigger. How many stones? All right, here, let me ask you. How many, how many members of the Sanhedrin were there? Too many. Okay, I'm going. Uh, 300. No. Wrong movie. Okay. <laughs> how many elders were there? How many elders did Moshe appoint? Too, a few too many, a few too little. Uh, 70. 70, very good. They are always mostly multiples of seven, right? Even the 40 is a multiple of seven, right? So, 
He had them collect 70 large stones. What was he supposed to do with those 70 large stones? Uh, they're in Eretz Israel. They just entered the land of Israel. They collected 70 stones. What are these 70 stones for? Altar? Uh, altar? No. Uh, was it for the river? Was it for the river? Was it? They were going to make a really, really nice mikvah because they were expecting Rabitz and Iska to get there. <laughs> 4,000 years later, and she's going to arrive. Fashionably late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really fashionably. Uh. So the 70 were for the 70 nations that surrounded them, right? Basically the whole earth. So 70 was for each, one for each of the nations. What do you think was going to happen to each of those 70 stones that were each for a nation? What was going to happen to that stone? Here, let me ask you, because you two guys know this, y'all are working on this in class. What do I what do I tell y'all is one of your primary commands for y'all to carry out in your lifetime? And it has to do with the first half of this book. What do I tell y'all y'all have to do? Love? Yes, that's I mean that's a good thing, yes. Y'all have to write what? Oh uh copy of the tour? have to write a copy of scripture, right? So what did Joshua have to do with these 70 tablets? Um, he copied it 70 times? Arthritis. There was no office in <laughs> He said arthritis. <laughs> Not only did he have to write it 70 times, he had to write it in each of the languages of the Canaanite nations. All 70 for all the world. Now, mind you, he probably had like assistants and assistants that assisted him with this, right? Because that is a lot of writing. 70 tablets. That's quite a bit. Stone tablets? I mean, how, many, how much information does your tablet hold, right? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Can you imagine their tablets? Forget it. All right, let me move on. So sage, the sages explain that it was God's intent, which was carried out by Joshua, that when he wrote those, on those tablets, that it was an opportunity for every nation to become a branch on his kingdom. Anyone who received the tablets and accepted this truth became a branch on that tree. Just as you and I have accepted God's truth, and we are now collect, collectively a branch on His kingdom, on His tree. The Torah was to be translated and written on the stones of all the 70 languages of the nations of the world. The Torah is the foundational basis of our faith. Uh, and not only of our faith, but of the three major faiths of the world. From Christianity to Islam to Judaism. All their, the main core is in Torah. The core to all three are there in Torah. Because you cannot open a Quran without Abraham. You cannot open a Bible without Abraham. You cannot open a Torah without Abraham. Our patriarch is all across the board in there. So this is our foundation, the living Word of God, the Yeshua of our lives. God's intent was that all the nations have the opportunity to make the Torah the foundation for their nations that they would be blessed, that the Jewish people would then take their role as, as the priests of the world and begin to teach the other nations in the ways of God without prejudice, without preconditions. God making the entire Torah accessible to every human being by having Joshua presented to all the different nations without prejudice, without precondition, 
we see that God intended that all be offered an opportunity to be a branch of His kingdom. Imagine if every nation around the globe during Sabbath they all lit their candles. Imagine they all praise Hashem. Imagine Lechado Di if all the world was singing it at the same time. What a beautiful sound that would be. Might be slightly off key, but that's okay. All of us in unity, praising Him, blessing each other. Keep presenting goodness in your life. For we know when Messiah comes, all Israel will be saved. Romans 11, 26. And if you think about that one verse, all of Israel will be saved. That means all those who have made themselves branches of that tree will be saved. Amen? Those who have not made themselves branches of His kingdom, well, that's for them. So who is Israel? Who is Israel? Is that you? Is that me? Is that the land? Yes and yes, right? You're Israel. I'm Israel. Israel is over there, right? We are a part of it. Because we took hold of those tablets. We received salvation in His living Word. And we await the return of the King Messiah. And as we prepare for it, let us start today as good servants. When we declare liberty to others, He frees us of our bindings. When we bless others, He blesses us. When we proclaim healing over others' lives, He is working to heal ours. You have not, and yet He gives us this, this warning in the word in it, Deror. You have not obeyed me in proclaiming the release of the captives, the Doror, each man to his brother and each man to his neighbor. Behold, I am now proclaiming release for you, that you will be released from my protection and given over to the sword and pestilence. So when we hold on to things that others have done, and we, when we don't release this from our lives and from theirs, God tells us openly He is not going to release those things from us. Right? But instead, when we hold on to things, He releases us he releases us over to the sword. He releases us over to pestilence. And He releases us over to famine. And I will make you... a thing of regret to all the nations of the earth. That is something, isn't it? Forgive us, Hashem. Forgive us. For the times that we have held on to the wrongs of others. Forgive us when we have held in unforgiveness those who are also your sons and daughters. May we shine as the blessings that you have created us to be. May we shine as the branch of your tree, full of your life and love, healing and worship. 
God bless you all, and thank you for your time. Shabbat Shalom. Please all rise as we do the blessing over the children. Oh, I'm hungry too. We'll eat in a minute, okay? You'll be all right. <laughs> okay. Now let me do the blessing for the uh, for the bread and the juice. Uh, if you're wondering, you're watching online. Why are they still holding matzah? Look, we bought. A few cases of matzah, we still have it, we're going to use it till it's gone, okay? Waste not, want not, and I love these things. So, uh, beautiful? Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth. Amen. All right, and the juice, Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Bore Pri HaGafen, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who is who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Amen. Gather your children right there where you are at home. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. May God make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. May the Lord protect and defend you. May He always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and like Esther. May you be as Ephraim and Manasseh. Strengthen them, O Lord, and keep them from the stranger's way. May God bless you and grant you long life. May the Lord fulfill our Sabbath prayer for you. May God you. make you good husbands and May wives. May He in His mercy love and care for you. May the Lord protect and defend May you. the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord preserve you from pain. Favor them, O Lord. Favor them, O Lord. With happiness, O oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay, if you gather with your loved ones for the final blessing, the Birchat Kohanim, right? Ready? Olam Haba. Olam Haze? Haze? You're not receiving her blessing? You know, if I saw it, that was going to happen. All right. And these are the words that Yeshua spoke of the Talmudim. These are also the words that Moshe instructed Aharon and his sons to pronounce over the sons and the daughters of Israel. Vehune 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. In the name of Yeshua Messiah, Shabbat Shalom. A uh, couple of quick announcements. Uh, we do have Shavuot coming up. Thank you all who came out for Lag Be Omer. That was oh, awesome. Those hot dog, the, the hot dog I had was great. Uh, <laughs> and thank you, Leon Valley PD, for extending our time a little bit that day, a wee bit. Uh, that being said, all the servants, all the brothers and sisters who showed up and, and helped out, God bless you, each 30 and 60 fold. Uh, we do have Shavuot coming up, as well as a couple of other trips after that. Yes, we do. Um, so if you want more information, go to the website, bekmc.com, as it should be getting regularly updated. Or go to the Facebook or Insta spam uh, pages. Or, of course, the hoodoo or the band. All right? That being said, God bless you. Shabbat shalom. And have a blessed day. Amen. Oh, and happy birthday to sister. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Huh? Hoodoo what? Hoodoo. So...